came and broke them down You broke them down And there were chains around us But by your grace we are no longer bound No longer bound You call me out of the grave You call me into the light You call my name and then my heart came alive Your love is greater Your love is stronger Awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Feel the darkness shaking, all the dead are coming back to life. I'm back to life. And hear a song awaken of all creation singing, We're alive, cause you're alive. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call my name, and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens. Awakens me, your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shouted out, We're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shouted out, church. Welcome to Vision Church. We're happy you're joining us today. And if you're joining us online, we're happy you're joining in as well. Be sure to comment. Let us know where you're watching from and uh, what's going on in your life and how you're feeling today. Uh, man, it's good to be in God's house as we're continuing our Advent series, building that anticipation of the arrival of Jesus. Not only that we know that Jesus has came for us, but just believing that God still is moving even in 2020. He's moving today. He's here right now. So whatever you're bringing in with you, whatever struggles, whatever baggage, whatever joy maybe you're carrying in here, be sure to give it to God, glorify him, trust in him, because he wants to meet us here today, and I believe that. So let's pray and welcome him here. Father, we thank you, God, that you are here with us right now, that you are God with us. And God, I want to pray right now for the service, God, that you would just move through it. Let your name be glorified. Let it all be about the name of Jesus. Let it all be about your glory, God. We want to encounter you, God. We want to know you more. We want to look more like you. We want to see more of your goodness and your grace and your character. So God, reveal yourself to us. And God, I do pray for the ones that's feeling heartache today. I know there are many that are dealing with heartache and loss and struggle God and I just pray right now that you would meet them right where they are God that you would you, you see their hurt you care about them you love them 
You want to strengthen them. You want to pour your love and grace over them, that you want to give them peace and comfort. And so, God, we're praying for you to do that. And, God, help us to surrender to you today to what you want to do. God, not our agenda, but what you want to do through our lives, what you want to do through worship and through your word, God. We just surrender to what you have for us. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. receive her king let every heart prepare him room let heaven and nature sing let heaven and nature sing let heaven and heaven and nature sing joy to the world the savior reigns let men their songs employ why fields and floods rocks hills and plains repeat the sounding joy repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat the sounding joy hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing, we will rise with you lifted on your wings, and the world will see that. Come on, church. Our God saves. Our God saves. There is hope. And make the nations prove the glories of your righteousness, the wonders of your love, the wonders of your love, the wonders, the oh wonders of your love. Hear the joyful sound of our offering. As your saints bow down, as your people sing, we will rise with you lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves, our God saves, there is hope. that again joy to the world joy to the world the lord is come you rule the world you rule the world with truth and grace you rule the world with truth and grace
so hard that some people here have lost so much. God, would we look to you um, for God, what you have given. God, would you shift our eyes, shift our focus back on your son. Like God, if the only gift we received this year, if the only thing we would get this Christmas is um, the reminder of the gospel, the gift of salvation, Lord, that that would be enough. God, we thank you that in the midst of 2020, that God, your hand has been working. That God, your spirit has been in and with your people. God, we thank you for your faithfulness in this season. Um, God, we thank you that you are faithful when we are not. God, we thank you for this church family and um, that God, we can help um, shoulder some of that burden of just this season we've been in, Lord. And God, we thank you that uh, despite everything, you are still God and you are still good and you are still worthy of every breath in our lungs and so God I pray that we would praise all the more God as we get into this third week in our Advent series even though this isn't a traditional Advent series um God would you speak through the power of your word in the way that only you do God it is so easy when Bibles are so accessible to us on our phones and we have a million dusty ones on our shelves Lord God would the word be made alive through the power of your spirit this morning in the eyes and in the minds and in the hearts of your people today that we would hunger and thirst for your word this morning that we would receive it and remember it and meditate on it that it would become a part of us god we thank you for your word it's a gift it's a privilege to be able to break open the breath of god on a page lord and so god i pray that we treat it as such this morning that we are eager to see you and hear from you through your word today god that our eyes and ears would be open to what you have to say. That God, our lives would be changed today, that every one of us would leave this place a little bit different, a little bit transformed, because that's who you are. You are the God that changes and transforms and makes new. So God, that's what we're praying for today. So God, you are honored and worshiped and glorified in this place. God, I pray that we keep this attitude of worship as we open your word, as we receive the sermon that you've put on Nathan's heart today, Lord. That worship doesn't end just because music does. And God, it's the posture of our lives and our hearts. So Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this place. Grow in us, be with us. Would your presence continue to fall? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Merry Christmas, church. I'm so happy you're joining in with us, either online or here in person. Uh, if you would turn to your Bibles in Acts 27, just go ahead and start flipping there. Uh, as I kind of recap what this series is, we are in our Advent series, and, and the idea is that we are waiting on the arrival of Jesus. So we've titled it Arrival. It's something we're expecting something that's already happened, something we're believing for. It's interesting that we can celebrate this time of the year that we know Jesus has already came and he's already saved us, right? He's went to the cross and he, he's arrived in our lives. 
And I'm believing, I know for a lot of you that you have met Jesus, he has arrived in your story and you've placed your faith in him. And maybe if you're here and you haven't done that or you're watching online, you haven't done that. I'm believing that God wants to arrive in your life. He's here right now. He's with you. And I believe he wants to save you. And so we are waiting on the arrival of Jesus. And so we want to join with the people of the Old Testament that we're in anticipation of a Savior. And so maybe some of you feel that way in your life now. You're like, I need a Savior right now. Maybe I know that Jesus has saved me, but my life does not look the way I want it to. This Christmas season does not look the way anybody planned it would. 2020 has been awful. Uh, It's taken so much from us. And maybe you're feeling that anticipation of, I need a Savior. I need someone to come and save the day. I need someone to arrive in the story and make it good and flip it and change it and find something good in this. That's why we have an Advent reading plan, and I want to encourage you that if you haven't joined in with that, we post it on Facebook. We'll have it through the slideshow after the service. Um, But join in with that. Read with your kids. Build that anticipation of those that were coming before Jesus and preparing the way and then the birth of Jesus. An Advent reading plan really helps us to get into the, the, I should say, spirit of Christmas and anticipation as well as we are doing the Advent candles, which we're not doing it the classic way, but my idea, my thought was that this has been a dark year, and so we need some more light in it. And so each week we light another candle as we wait for the arrival where we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus, and the glow gets brighter and the darkness diminishes. And I'm hoping that through this series, as you anticipate God moving in your life and working in this the rest of this year, that God still wants to work and move. He has things he wants to do in 2020, that you would see that light start to grow and your faith would start to grow. And you would see that Jesus is here, that he actually is God with us. So as the light grows, so does our faith and anticipation. Our anchor verse for the series is in Matthew 1.23. We've been in it every week, so let's go ahead and read that, and then we're going to pray. Matthew 1.23 says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen? It's good news for us, so let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are with us, God, that you have not abandoned us, you haven't left us as messed up as this year has been, and some of our lives are, God, that you are in the mess with us, that your heart breaks when we break. And God, that you are with us and you have purposes beyond our minds, what we can understand, God, that you are the one that turns the worst into the best. You turn the, these experiences and the struggle into a blessing and to glory for you. And so, God, I'm believing that for our families Today, the ones joining and watching, maybe that person that just happened to click on this video, going through their timeline, didn't even know what it was, God, that you would speak to them right now and that you would arrive in their life and they would see your grace and your truth and your character and your love for them. God, that we are anticipating not only the birth of Jesus, but we also are anticipating a move of Jesus in our lives, that we all want to grow and we want to know him more. We want less of us and more of him. So God, I'm praying that you would do that today, work in our lives. We're going to surrender to you, God. And God, I pray for conviction on us. We know that conviction leads to repentance and to growth. And so God, a lot of us are holding on to sins in our lives. A lot of us are struggling with things and we think we can carry them and we can't. So God, help us, convict us, help us to surrender and open and release to you and surrender to what you have for us, God. Have your way. We're praying for salvation today, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is with us, church. So Christian, let me speak to you. God is with you. In 2020, right now, with the loss you face, with the struggle you face, with the annoyances you face, even with you, on your, feel like you're on your last like nerve, right? Guess what? God is with you. And this is what we celebrate, the arrival of Jesus. That was God saying, hey, listen, I have promises for you, but now my actions are going to match my words. I'm not just going to talk about being with you. I'm going to send myself wrapped in flesh in Jesus, my son, and be and dwell with you. And then Jesus will give his life so that he can be with you, his spirit can be with you always, that God truly means what he says when he says, I will be with you always, and I will never leave you nor forsake you, and I'm going to prove it in Jesus. Christian, God is with you. And I believe some of you are waiting on God for something, that miracle to come through, that answer to prayers that you've been praying for for weeks or 
years, that help, that relief, that rest, that growth, the answers to something you've been struggling with for a while. I believe a lot of us are waiting on God for something. Well, waiting is an act of faith. It is a verb, and it involves preparation. We don't just wait and sit in our comfy church chairs and say, we're waiting on God to do something. We act in faith, and we believe as if God is going to do something. We are expectant for God to move, not only in our lives and in this church, but in the people's lives around us, that God's going to use us as avenues to reach people. We're not waiting, sitting here on our hands. We are waiting with anticipation and moving as if we believe God is moving before us and behind us and with us. So waiting is an act of faith. A lot of you will be having company over for some sort of gathering Christmas or something. And when you know somebody's about to arrive, you're running around the house crazy, aren't you? (laughs) It's like, how did we, we knew this was happening for weeks, but somehow the day before or an hour before, you are still shoving things in closets, hoping people don't open that door because then everybody's going to be covered in an avalanche. You're hiding things. You're putting things away, trying to make it look as clean. My house always looks this way. It's like, no, it doesn't. We know that. But when you're expecting an arrival of somebody, of company, you start to clean. You start to prepare. You know, you're not just waiting, saying, hopefully they'll arrive. You're saying, no, I need to prepare a place for them. I need to prepare, prepare that the couch is ready for them to sit on it. When they sit on it, dog hair ain't going to just get all over them. You know, we're going to vacuum that. We're going to clean that. We're going to prepare for the company. So waiting on the arrival involves preparation. We are currently, Nikki and I, waiting on our son. And I can tell you it is preparation. We're not just sitting here saying, well, he'll get here when he gets here. Like, There's been preparation. Parents, you know that, and it's more than what you ever expect. And you're like, nursery, planning this, doctor's visits, you're preparing. And what I've noticed is that we got to create space for a new human, and that means less space for me. Because we live in a small house, so Nathan, your clothes are just going to be thrown somewhere. we got to have space for the baby, and I'm all about that. I want him, and I'm excited for him, so I'm like, yeah, I'll surrender my space for more space for you because I'm excited about his arrival. We've got to create space. We're rearranging our lives for him. We're cleaning the house for him. Church, if we're believing God to arrive in our lives, we don't just wait and do nothing. We wait with anticipation and we clean our house. If we're believing he's going to arrive and we know he could arrive any second, I'm cleaning my house, I'm preparing, and I'm making less space for me and more space for him. Come on, church, right? Like we say less of me, more of you, God. I want to grow. I want to know you, so I'm going to push the sin out of my life. I'm not just going to hoard the closet. I'm making space for Jesus. And so if we're expecting him, we need to create space, rearrange our lives for him, and clean the house. God is with us. And we said that he's with us in the valleys. Last week we said he's with us in the wilderness. And today I want us to see that God is with us in the storm. So what do you do when you're hit with a storm? Some people blame God. Some people question God. Some people just run away from him because they don't want anything to do with it. They're like, I'm not necessarily mad, but I, you know, I started trying to follow God and then the storm came. So I'm just not going to step away from that. I hope that a lot of us run to him and find refuge in him. And here's the thing about a storm. It's a little bit different than a valley and wilderness because my grandma would say sometimes it just blows up one, right? Like you're not expecting it. Weatherman didn't predict it. The winds start blowing. The sky changes. It was just sunny. Boom, storm. Blowed up one. And for you, I believe a lot of you in 2020, you weren't expecting things, and that storm blew through. And it was probably, normally storms are quick ones. They blow through, but they leave a wreckage that you're cleaning up for for a while. They leave scars that you're cleaning up and having to heal from for a while. Maybe that storm just decided to hover atop of you and just stay there, and it feels like the rain is never going to stop. But what do we do when the storm hits? Because God is with us in the storm. Look at Acts 27. Verse 20 and 21, Paul is traveling here, and actually he's in captivity. He's got soldiers that are taking him to be put on trial, and they get on a boat. Even though there's a storm out there, they're going to sail because they want to get there, and they don't want to wait any longer. And so they start to sail into a storm. Paul's on this boat. There's soldiers, and there's many other people. And look at verse 20. It says, When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, 
and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Man, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. What I want to focus in on there is the end of verse 20. It says, All hope of being saved was at last abandoned. The storm lasted too long. The clouds stayed too long. The rain got too long. It wore me down. All hope is lost. Well, this is my first point if you're taking notes. The presence of a storm doesn't negate the presence of God. And we need to get this because so many of us think that if there's a storm in my life, that means God has left me, he's abandoned me, he's not with me, and that is false, that is a lie from the enemy. Listen, the presence of a storm doesn't negate the presence of God. It's not that, hey, God's with me, so I'm never going to have a storm. That's actually the opposite. There's going to be storms in your life, but the presence of God is there Verse 20 says, storm continued raging. They gave up hope. Maybe you relate to this. Giving up hope, can't beat this. You know, I'll keep going to church. I'll watch church. But I've kind of given up hope on this year. I've given up hope in my life. I've given up hope, the struggle of the sin I've been dealing with. I'm just kind of giving up hope with it. It just feels like it's just going to be there. My marriage, maybe your marriage, you're saying, hey, listen, I'm just giving up hope. This is, this storm's too bad. Maybe in your singleness, you're saying, hey, listen, this storm's too bad. I'm just going to give up hope. Debt, you're in debt. You're like, man, listen, every time I try to get out of debt, another bill comes out of nowhere and just hits me. I'm stuck in debt. Maybe you're struggling in school and you're saying, is this even worth it? Am I going to even be able to get a job? This year's been crazy and people are cutting back and it just looks awful. Maybe you're struggling with depression. I mean, it feels like that storm is just too big too heavy, it's going to leave too much of a scar on you to pick up from the wreckage because the storm just rages on. What's interesting about Paul's storm that he's in in, this, in, in in the ship and the storm comes in, Paul stands up and looks at the people and says, if you would have listened to me. And I love Paul, but sometimes I'm like, Paul, what you doing? You know, I mean, like Paul, Paul's like, he's not afraid to stand up and be like, I told you so. I know I'm just the held captive prisoner. I got to be on, you know, on trial before Caesar. But I kind of said, "Hey, probably don't want to sail today. Let's just hang out." Y'all wanted to go anyways. Look what happened. I tried to tell you not to sail, and you did it anyways. When I apply this to my life, you know, I I love to blame everything on somebody else. I love to blame everything on the devil too. Man, I give him way more credit than is due to him. Because a lot of times, it's just me being dumb. That I sailed myself into that storm. That storm didn't just come up and hit me. I went into it thinking, I'll be fine. Like, I can handle it. And, I, and boom, storm hits me. The ship starts falling apart. My life starts falling apart. I'm like, devil. Devil's like, I wasn't anywhere around you, man. Like, you, you did this to yourself, but I'll use it. We love to blame him for everything, but not always, but sometimes we're in the storm because we made poor choices. We didn't listen to the wise people around us. We didn't listen to our friends. We didn't listen to God. We didn't listen to his Bible. I know the Bible says this, and I know God tells me not to do this, but you know what? I'm going to sail into the storm anyways. I know other people that storm really messed up. I know that storm sunk other people. I know adultery sunk other people, but it's not going to do it to me. I know messing up in a job, other people got in trouble for doing this at the workplace, but it, they like me, and it's not, this storm's not going to wreck me. And God's like, listen to my word. It wrecked them. It will wreck you. Stop sailing into the storm. Maybe this is why the sailors gave up hope. They're like, this is our fault. We deserve this anyways. You know, remember when we went through Jonah? This is kind of similar. Jonah went through a storm, and it was like, instead of repenting on the boat and then letting everybody be saved, he was like, this is my fault. Throw me overboard and let me drown. Like he just given up hope. This is my fault. And a lot of times when we know that we ran into the storm, we sailed into the storm and it's our fault, which church, we're sinners. So yes, it's on us. We think, well, God can't get me out of this because I, I, you know, if God brought the storm into my life and he's trying to teach me something, then I know he can get me out of it. But if I sailed into it, like he doesn't have to get me out. Well, this is the good news that whether you sailed into it or the storm blew up and hit you and it's not your fault, God is with you. As you run into the storm and you're running away from God, God is still 
with you. Jonah was trying to run away from God, and God was like, man, I got a whale chasing you. I'm with you. So a lot of times it's our poor choices, but man, God is so gracious and so good that he is still with us in the storm. Now on this boat, there are other people there, Paul and other people, that it wasn't their decision to sail into the storm. It was the captain and whoever was manning the boat. It's not their fault. It's the other people's fault, but they just happen to be involved with them. Maybe you can experience this in your family, friend group, work, whatever it is. It's like, this storm isn't my fault, but because of my proximity to other people around me, that storm's been brought into my life that I'm dealing with. This isn't my fault. The company I work for made a bad decision. It's not my fault. My parents got divorced. It's not my fault that I went through this. My friend betrayed me. I've got these health issues, and they're not my fault. It's like this storm came out of nowhere. It's not my fault. Well, listen, it doesn't matter why or how you got in the storm. God sees you, cares about you, and is with you in it. Whether you steered yourself there or if it just blew up on you, God is with us. So church, To reemphasize the first point, the presence of a storm doesn't negate the presence of God. In fact, it's in the storm where we really hold on to his presence and we can feel his presence because we can't hold on to anything else. Look at verse 22 and 23. Paul says, yet now I urge you to take heart. I want to say that to some of you. Take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of God. I want us to get this. Paul's in the storm, not by his fault. And even though the storm is raging, he says, but take heart, God is with me. He's standing with us in this. Second point, you cannot control everything but you can control where you place your faith. So many of us, were trying to control everything in our lives, and it's breaking us. It's tearing us apart, and we want to have control of everything, our health and other people and what's going on in our lives, and we want full control. And listen, we, we should strive for good health and strive for what we do, and we, we, we take responsibility in our lives. But listen, you can't control everything, but you can control. The one thing you can control in your life is where you're going to place your faith. That's what Paul's saying here. He says, take courage. My God is with us. Just last night, he sent an angel to stand right up by me. And he encouraged me. He says, you're not going down, Paul. We're not going to lose any lives here. We're going to lose the ship Because guess what? When a storm comes, it usually takes something. There's going to be a loss. But he says, listen, God is with us. You will not lose any lives. Paul placed his faith in God and in the promises that God gave him. Let me speak this to you. Take courage. God is here. God is with us. God is with you in the storm. Paul could have, and this is where most of us would have done, we could have just joined in with the rest of the complaints. This stinks. I'm wet, I'm cold, and I'm going to drown. Like, I don't know what's in this water. This ship is going down, and I don't like it. This is awful. It's hopeless. Storm won't stop. The ship is breaking apart. I'm tired. But what does Paul do when the storm hits? places his faith in God. He says, I can't control if the ship goes down. I can't control if other people don't listen to me and the captain didn't listen to me and what other people want to do. But you know what I can control in this situation? I can get on my knees and pray and I can place my faith in God and believe and expect that God is going to arrive in this situation in some way. Listen, you cannot control the storm, but you can place your faith in the one who does control the storm. So instead of me trying to like stop the wind on my own and try to stop the rain and try to fix everything, I can stop and say, listen, I can't control the storm, this hurricane, this whatever's in my life right now that's tearing my life apart. I can't control other people in this, but I can place my faith in the God who is sovereign over all. That's where I'll place my faith. That's where I'm going to trust is the one who is in control. 
That's what I love about serving God is that a lot of us, we get to see what God's doing in our lives and in each other's lives. There's a lot that we get to see that God is so gracious that he shows us him working. But church, we have no idea what God is doing that we can't see. Like you have no idea the different ways God is with you in your life and throughout your life and in your workplaces and in your family and when you're driving in your car. That like in this situation, God sent an angel to stand by Paul. Here's what's really cool, and I don't want to freak anybody out. There are angels in our world. They exist, and we can't see in the spiritual realm, but I believe right now that there are distractions and lies that the enemy's trying to pierce into your mind right now, and there are angels defending you. We don't get to see that, but that is happening. That God is with us and he's protecting us and he's working right now even when we can't see it. We have no idea the ways God is protecting us with his Holy Spirit, that God's put his Holy Spirit in us to guide us, that he goes before us, that God is outside of time. So guess what? You're worried about what tomorrow's going to bring. God is in tomorrow. What's 2021 look like? Well, God is in 2021. He is outside of it. He sees it all. And guess what? And he is with you. I love 2 Timothy 4, verse 16 and 17. It says that at my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me, but may not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me. Some of us, you're saying, man, my friends left me and this storm's taken everything from me and my, my job or my, whatever's going on in my life. Well, guess what? Everything can be lost, but if we can believe this, say, But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me. Look at Psalm 16, verse 8. It says, I have set the Lord. David says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Storm's going to come. It's going to come with everything it's got. Maybe you sailed into it. Maybe the enemy's coming at you with it and he's directing it right in your path. You don't even see it coming. It's going to blindside you. But if the Lord is always before us, And he's right there with us at our right hand. I shall not be shaken. You shall not be shaken. Can't control everything, but you can control where you place your faith. And you can believe that God is with you. I'm telling you, this changes the atmosphere in your workplace, in your families. Because when that storm comes up, you're you're not building your foundation on sand, right? It's not washing your life away because, you know, okay, we lost, this storm comes, right? And I, I always, I hate it. I hate storms and everything. But when you see the news and the tornado blows through and there's the family standing out there and, with their kids and they're interviewing, and I love that you always hear this. You know what? We lost the house and we lost our stuff. That stuff can be replaced. This is what matters. And so if we're building our foundation on God and who God is, That can't be taken from us. No storm is going to rip God's hands off of you in your life. He is with you. He's promised to be with you. He's promised to never leave you. So no, no matter how hard that is, God has you and is with you. Place your faith in him. Trust him. Let's look back at verse 23 again. For this very night there stood before me an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid. There's significance in that because that is one of the most common phrases in Scripture. Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar and behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart. Once again, take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told Can we say that about our lives, that we know what Scripture says? And so whenever something comes to wreck our lives or to storm in our lives or to hit us, no matter how painful it is and how hard it is, we can say, but I know the promises of God, and I I believe it will be just as he has told. Third point, peace isn't found in the absence of a storm, but in the presence of Jesus. So many of us, we think, if this storm just wasn't in my life, everything would be fine. You know, If there wasn't this money issue in my family, my marriage would be fine. If there wasn't this, then this. And we're constantly doing that, right? You all do that when you lay up at night and you can't sleep. It's like, well, if this was like this, then this would be this. And if I made this much money, then this would work out. And if that person would just be quiet, then this would be fine. And we go through all that and we want peace without the storm. Listen, did you know you can have the worst storm of your life and still have peace? It's because 
Peace has nothing to do with the storm or what your life looks like or the struggle you're going through. Peace has to do with a person that you know and believe is with you, the presence of Jesus. Real peace isn't found in a trouble-free life. That doesn't exist. There is no trouble-free life. A lot of us think if we had more money, then we'd have no troubles. Well, more money, more problems, right? Like that's, that's what we know this, that, that the trouble-free life doesn't exist. And following Jesus doesn't mean you won't have bad days. In fact, we're talking about believing God's promises. There's a promise Jesus gives us that in this life, you will have trouble. But the promise is, but what does he say? Take heart. Same exact thing that God is telling Paul. Take heart, for I have overcome the world. So you're going to face trouble, but there's no trouble bigger than God and who he is. And so you will have trouble. Take heart. I've overcome the world. So real peace is found in the presence of Jesus. The angel tells Paul, Paul, you're not going down in this this storm because you've got to stand trial before Caesar. And a lot of us were like, man, I just want to get out of this storm. And that's what our hope is. And that's where we think, okay, God, I'm, I'm going to praise you when I get out of this storm. We need to learn to praise him in the storm. Because as soon as we get out of that storm, guess what? There's probably another storm, another trouble, something that's coming your way. And so the angel tells Paul, hey, listen, you can't go down in this storm because you got to be on trial and another storm coming up for you. I've got more to use you for and more to work through you in. So you can't go down here. Because I've already promised that you've got to face Caesar. You've got another storm ahead of you. And I want to speak to us that you cannot go down in this storm, whatever that is that you're dealing with right now. And I'm going to specifically speak to depression, but whatever you're struggling with, you cannot go down in this storm of depression or debt or marital problems. Because God has more for you to do. He's got more battles for you to fight. Your battle's not over. There's another battle around the way. And guess what? We're so self-absorbed about the storm we're in and the battle we're fighting that we don't realize that if we looked around, there are friends and family that are fighting battles that could really use us, that if we could place our faith in God in the storm we're in and the battle we're in, that we could pick up a sword and go fight with our friends and our family and our church family in the battle they are in. That we know that God is with them as well, but how good is it if there's two or more gathered together fighting that battle together? You got another battle to fight. You got more people to love. You got more people to serve. You got more people to share Jesus with. You're not done. So while you're waiting on God and you're waiting for the storm to be over with, place your faith in Jesus, trust in the presence of Jesus, and continue to let him use you. And this is what's so great about this, and this is how good our God is, that he always flips everything, right? So God will use what you learn through this storm and through this battle to help someone in theirs. I'm telling you, God will use what you're going through right now, and you're saying, man, listen, I can't even think about that right now. Well, listen, grab onto Jesus and let yourself think about that, that when you're out of this storm, there's going to be a story to tell. There's going to be a testimony. There's going to be something for you to share with others that are getting ready to sail right into a storm. God always uses what we go through, uses our pain, uses our struggle. It's not pointless, right? The pain you're facing is not meaningless pain that the world is just hurting you with. It is all tools that God will redeem and use for his glory. That should change our perspective whenever we face those battles. God will use what you learn to help someone in their storm. And so listen, don't waste your storm. So many of us, we're so waiting for us to get out of the storm and get it behind us and forget about it. Listen, I'm saying don't waste it. The, the God, like I, I'm telling you, the enemy might have gave you the ammo, but God will use it for his glory. And so whatever storm is in your life, God, don't waste it. Use that to help other people. 
Use that for God's glory. When the enemy's like, man, remember how bad I messed you up with that storm? And you say, but yeah, God was with me, wasn't he? Like God was right there, and you, you threw everything at me, man. You, you threw the wind and the rain, and you were, that tornado came through and wrecked my life. But God was with me. Like that's so cool. Like, it, man, I'm telling you, that tears the enemy up. When the devil's throwing everything at you, and you've messed, maybe you've messed your whole life up, and the devil's like, I didn't even have to mess with him. Yeah, but when God redeems it and uses it and you place your faith in God, it changes everything. Don't waste your storm. Use it for God's glory. I love Isaiah 9, verse 6. It's a prophecy of Jesus to come. It says, this is who he will be. It says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and what? Prince of Peace. He, see, peace isn't the absence of a storm. Peace is a person. It is Jesus. And so when our world is in complete chaos, when our world is just ravaged by sin and pride and like what human instinct that we're just messed up and we're awful and we're self-absorbed, that God would send Jesus, the Prince of Peace, into this messed up world, that it's still messed up, right? Like a lot of people are like, well, Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Shouldn't that have fixed everything? No, our world's messed up and it has fallen. But when we cling to peace, which is Jesus, it changes everything. Let me close with this. Let's go back to Acts 27, verse 20. Some of you feel this, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days. Maybe that's you. I just feel like I'm in darkness. I feel like there's nothing going to change. There's no hope. And all hope of being saved was at last abandoned. All hope is lost. Some of you, I know, relate to this. And you're saying, listen, I've been there or I'm currently there. Doesn't seem like, you know, night's ever going to end I don't see stars. I don't see the sun. I just see darkness. I see fog. I see storm. I see struggle. All hope is lost. Well, let me encourage you that this is why God sent Jesus to be the hope of the world. That when their hope was lost and there was no hope, God would send hope. Not only is he hope, but he is peace. He's the prince of it. He's the everlasting father, and he is our mighty God. So I don't know if you're struggling right now with whatever you're dealing with. I don't know if you feel like it's all darkness. I don't feel like, I don't know if you feel like there's no hope. I'm telling you, God will use this year. The loss that you faced this year, as hard as it is and painful as it is, because God feels that pain with you, God will use it and redeem it. And that's an amazing thing to have a mighty God that is strong enough to take all of that darkness and bring a light into the world that is our hope and our peace. For our world that was broken, without hope and in utter darkness, struggling and drowning in the storm of sin, Jesus arrived. And hope was born because there was no hope. We're waiting on the Messiah. Is he ever going to come? I feel like we've been waiting forever. And then a baby cries in the night. Hope is born. Jesus is here. And Jesus would live perfect. He would heal. He would restore. He would do miracles. He would feed people. He would walk on water. He would teach people. He would meet with widows. And he would care for people. I'm telling you, he was raising the dead. But the most important thing that he ever did above all of it was go to the cross and die for our sins so he could finally say peace to sin. That when sin was ravaging our life and ravaging your life and tearing your life apart, and maybe that's where you're at right now, is sin is just tearing you up. 
Remember when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and he's sleeping and the storm comes up and they're like, what are we going to do? And Jesus wakes up, he's like, where's your faith? And he says, peace, be still. Boom, storm gone. That is God's authority over our lives, his authority over sin because of the cross. So listen, he loves you. He died for you. And he is Emmanuel, God with us. I just wanted to encourage you to place your faith in him today. If you're in a storm, realize that he's standing with you in the storm. If you need peace, realize it's not in getting through what you're in. It's clinging to a person that is Jesus. And if you're in person or you're watching online and you've never placed your faith in Jesus, I want to really encourage you that if you feel his conviction, you feel his presence right now, you feel something drawing you that you've never felt before, that is the Holy Spirit guiding you and drawing you, and I'm going to ask that you would surrender to him. That you would place your faith in him, that you would trust that Jesus, you are my hope, you are my peace, you are my savior, and I need you to save me. So if you're praying that right now, if you're praying that in, from your home, wherever you are, I want to encourage you, messages, fill out that Connect card. If you're here in person and you're feeling that, you have questions about that after the service, come sit up here in one of the front seats. We'll talk with you, pray with you, whatever you need. And if you're struggling with anything else in your life, we want to fight this battle with you. You're not alone. God is with you, but we want to join in with that. So we'll pray with you and help you fight these battles of the storm in your life. But I want, to, I want you to know... God is with you in the storm. He's with you in the valley. He's with you in the wilderness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, that you are what we sang. You are the way maker. You're the one that moves mountains. You're the one that raises the dead. You're the one that restores the broken. God, I know there's people that feel broken right now that's listening or here in person, God, and I pray that you would draw them, that you would pour over them, that they would feel your presence for the first time or uh, in a long time or the first time ever, God, that they would feel that you are completely opposite from the darkness that they're facing, that you are the light of the world and darkness can never overcome. God, have your way in this place. Have your way in our lives as we trust you, as we cling to you. God, we believe that you are not done with this year, as messed up as it has been, God. And as much as it seems like this year is taken from us, we know nothing can be taken from us because you are everything. That you hold everything. That you are our Savior, good Father, and everlasting Father. You are mighty God, and you are our Prince of Peace. So I'm praying for peace for those that need it. I'm praying for that storm to cease for those that are struggling. But above all, God, I'm praying that our faith would be built and placed in you. Despite what our lives look like, despite how hard our world is, God, that we would right now turn and cling to you. God, as we continue to worship, I'm praying that people connect with you, that they would feel your presence and they would surrender during this time. We thank you, God, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
worship you. You are here and working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here and moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here and working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here and touching every heart. I worship you. I worship and you are here and healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. and you are here, you're turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way making miracle promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Church.
I pray um, that no matter what storm, um, what valley, what wilderness, Lord, that we're in, that we never withhold our praise from you. And God, even in um, our secular, our human world, God, when we know a storm's coming, Lord, we prepare. We get toilet paper, bread, milk, whatever that looks like, Lord. Candles, we get ready. But God, all you ask us to do in preparedness for either your arrival or for the storms that we know are gonna come as the result of this broken world, Lord, you just ask us for our praise. God, you ask us for our obedience, our prayer. You ask for time with us. So Lord, would we do that in preparation, whether or not any person in a seat or watching today, whether or not we're waiting for saving from a storm or preparing for a storm that we believe is about to come. Lord God, I pray that the way we prepare is to get into your word. Lord, we cannot combat the enemy and his lies and what he says and the lies of this world. Lord, if we do not know what you say, your truth, what you have promised. Lord, that we would prepare in prayer, Lord, that we would grow our prayer life, our relationship that we get to have with you, or that we would pour into that above every other relationship in our lives, God, that you would destroy those idols in our lives so that we could have true communion and relationship with you. And God, that we would prepare with praise. Again, whether we're waiting for a saving from a storm or whether we're preparing for the storm that might come, Lord, would we do so in prayer and in worship because you are good in and outside of everything, every storm, every trial, every tribulation that we have. Your goodness is not dependent on our circumstance or situation, our title, where we're at with work or our job. Lord, would we stop hoarding away silly things and little things that we think will help us when the storm does come or whether the storm we're in right now, but God, would we let go of every other thing and cling to you? Lord, a lot of us are in storms right now and God, all we want is to get out of it. And even though we know that one word in that storm would cease because that is who you are, we also know, Lord, that sometimes you're teaching us something. So Lord, if that's what you have for us today, if you're trying to speak through the destruction of a storm to get our attention, to demand our praise or our obedience that we've been withholding, to encourage us, to mold us to look more like your son. God, we welcome it today. We welcome your conviction. We welcome your transformation. Even if it has to be through uncomfortable ways, God, we thank you that you use storms that even that the enemy sends our way, Lord, to teach us something, to grow our faith. Lord, again, we thank you for this church. God, these people that you have brought here, it's not by accident that a single person is watching today or is here in person today, Lord, but you want to grow this family. And we're not talking numerically, but we're talking spiritually, Lord, that we could shoulder each other's burdens, that we could weather the storm with one another. God, because the same spirit lives in all of us that you call child. Lord, we thank you for salvation that you sent your son in the most humble, incredible way that we can't even wrap our minds around to die for us, those of us who forget you when the storm comes or forgets you when things are good. Lord, you died for us all. So Lord, we thank you for who you are this morning. God, we thank you that your presence is with us in this place. And God, I pray that um, we feel that as we leave. And again, when the music fades, that your presence doesn't leave with it, Lord, but your presence is in your people. So God, would we walk and talk and live like it? God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your spirit and for the way that that is shown through your people. In Jesus' name, amen. And church, we thank you for worshiping with us today. We thank you for being here with us today, whether that's in person or online. Um, if this is your first time watching and you have questions or your first time here, maybe you just want to know what we believe or what we're about, please fill out a digital connect card. You can find a link for that in the live stream of the video or find it on our website. Um, if you have questions about Jesus, about the gospel, about what we're talking about, we want to have that conversation with you because um, we believe having a relationship with Jesus, accepting salvation is the best decision you could ever make in your entire life. Um, so please do that. If you call Vision Church your home and you want to worship through tithes or offering, we have the text to give, the Church Center app. Of course, you can give here. Um, and this allows us to keep doing the ministry that God has set upon this church. Um, so again, church, thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you for being here with us today. Um, as we 
prepare, prepare for the arrival of Christ. Um, next week, I can't believe it, is technically Christmas Sunday. Um, so invite someone with you. Um, send someone the live stream link when it happens next week. Um, and just take this time to prepare, be a part of the reading plan. And again, thanks, church. We'll see you next week.